quick show of hands. Uh, who here in the room has actually heard a wave before? Nice. Good. Just Billy. So, uh, following Billy Gregory is a uh, task in itself, and uh, Billy knows his stuff, and he's a great presenter, and he had a lot of great information to share with everybody. So, uh, again, thanks, Billy. That was awesome. So, this is about uh, beating the tsunami with a wave. And so, to me, wave is the lowest barrier to entry for testing your web content for accessibility. So, before we get started, I am on the wrong slide. Okay, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. We're, uh, we're good to go. So, uh, this is talking about beat the tsunami with a wave. And by wave, I'm talking about the web accessibility evaluation tool that's made available by WebAIM. WebAIM is a non-profit accessibility agency based out of uh, Utah, and WebAIM itself is an acronym. It's, it stands for Web Accessibility in Mind. So, who am I? I am a transplanted Newfoundlander. I am a proud father, and I'm prone to embarrassing my wife at live sporting events. <laughs> like, that's cool, all right, but uh, we're here to talk about focusing on accessibility. So, to get there, I wanted to tell a little bit about my own story. I've been a developer since 1999. I've worked at all kinds of sites, big, small, uh, e-commerce sites, uh, multinational sites, uh, Mitsubishi Motors, ya uh, Yamaha, uh, Hanes, uh, Mastermind Toys here in Toronto. And uh, that all changed when I worked for an agency in our, our age. Uh, we were the agency of record for Bank of America. Working for Bank of America, everything we produced had to be accessible. Uh, we have five offices in North America, and I was the first developer added to this account, so I, by default, became the accessibility guy. And I was like, uh-oh, what's accessibility? And I had to learn it all from the beginning. So it was a real game changer for me, personally. Uh, I had the opportunity to go to Utah and receive training firsthand from the people at WebAIM. And that really changed my perspective, changed my career, changed my attitude about web development. Um, I went to their experience lab, and there were, they have a deaf tester there, a blind tester there. And I went out and introduced myself. I shook, shook his hand, said, "Hey, I'm, it's no, don't tell me your name. Just give, give me your name badge." So I gave him my, I gave him my, I gave him my name badge. And he scanned it on his little Nokia Symbian phone. He goes, "Oh, hi, Patrick. Hey, pleased to meet you." Mind blown, right there. It was, it was pretty wild. So, fast forward to the present. I'm a senior developer at CBC, a uh, wonderful corporation that I hope you all uh, support. <laughs> okay, so what about this tsunami? Uh, accessibility is not a question of if it applies to you, it's gonna be a question of when it's gonna to apply to you. There are multiple standards to the world here in our own backyard, we have the accessibility Accessibility for Ontario with Disabilities Act, which is tiered rollout. Uh, 2015 is the next goal, and then it's 2010. The most rec recognized standard internationally is WCAG 2.0. And WCAG actually, uh, again, obviously is an acronym, stands for Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Uh, the original one was in 1999, it was refreshed in 2008, and just last fall it was recognized as an international ISO. Uh, some other ones I want to talk about, the British Standards over in the UK, BS8878, all, of the con all the websites and content, uh, mobile and desktop, has to, be, has to meet this standard. Our neighbors to the south, uh, the 21st Century Video Accessibility Act, uh, introduced by Obama in 2010, uh, states that all multimedia online has to be accessible. Now there's a bit of push and shove about that, it's still a little bit in flux, but one of the major things to come out of that is Netflix is committed to having their entire library closed captioned by 2014. You think about that, the, the library, the, the video that they have, that's, that's a massive undertaking. So, back to the tsunami. Uh, as we age, we 
we deteriorate. Our eyesight goes, our hearing goes, our mobility is impaired. And the baby boomers, they're living longer, they're, they're working longer, they have needs for online services that offer them independence and make their life easier. Oh, it's commonly referred to as the silver tsunami. Um, i sure a number of you are familiar with that term. So, today's goal, I want to introduce everybody to a free testing tool that anybody can use and it's extremely easy to use. It's available to anybody and it's extremely easy. So, it uh, actually comes in three flavors. Uh, like stick in the Apple and ice cream, we have, uh, there's a web version, a web base that anybody can access. Uh, there's an API that you can register for that. And there's also a toolbar that you can download and use locally. So the web version, it provides different views you'll see over here. We have uh, styles, no style, take them, strip the styling from your site. It'll also highlight the different contrast areas you have. Uh, when you wave a page, uh, it'll take uh, anywhere depending on your interconnection obviously, it'll, it'll you get a little spinner on your site. Your site will show up to the right side, and this panel is active the entire time. So, I'm, I'm going to do a demo of this next, actually, so you'll see it in action. Um, it allows you to determine your target goal. Uh, WCAG has three levels. You can be A, double A, or triple A. Uh, it also has, uh, being a, I'm assuming, this is back to assume, but uh, because WebAIM is based in America, they also include 508 in there as well. Uh, 508, I didn't mention that. 508 is the American Federal Act for Accessibility. Uh, any federal agencies that develop web content has to be accessible, as well as any <laughs> agencies that work for them, you build content for them. Uh, there's also a big refresh coming on 508. It hasn't been updated in, I, the, name, the date escapes me, but it's definitely been 15 years, so in web time, 15 years is pretty much uh, you go down, we get the flags, you can, it'll highlight the errors, the information, it'll tell you what the errors are for, it allows you, to, it maps instantly to the specifications, it'll tell you why this is important, what the checkpoint is, and then the last one right here, it shows you your document outline. Uh, Billy was talking about headers earlier, headings earlier, and this will reveal your heading structure of your website immediately. So, it's a, it's a fantastic tool, it's free. Uh, it was just updated last year, it was in beta for a while, and this past, at CSUN this past March is when they did their official launch for this tool. So, we're going to do a demo. I uh, decided it would probably be a fun idea to uh, wave uh, the meetup page for tonight's event. <laughs> so, I'm just going to bring up uh, Firefox here. Bear with me for a second. Uh, it's a little odd. So wave.webaim.com. Anybody can access that. I'm just going to grab the URL. And I should have cloned the monitors instead of extending it. Oh. I already have it in there. Smart than I thought it was. <laughs> So as you can see, it's now waving the page. It's using the server call. It's uh, connecting to their wave engine right here. And we will see we have returned 240 errors, 274 alerts, 241 accessible features on this site, or 295 structural elements. It makes zero use of HTML5 or ARIA. And there's 337 contrast errors. And uh, we're just going to briefly go through that right now. <laughs> now, sorry, can I ask a question? Would that be from meetup.com? Yes, this is from meetup.com. It's, meetup it's not DevTO. So, any, so any site that uses the meetup templating system is going to inherit these it's problems. Inherit these. Okay. Yes. That's just that page. It's just this page. Yes, exactly. Wow. So. But it's a little misleading, I'll be honest. There is a problem with the way they've done their right column. You can see we have 205 confirmation members tonight. So 205 of these errors are the same error repeated. So what this is right here, it's a link 
that doesn't have text, or if, it's using a, if the image is a link, the image itself doesn't have link text. So that's one error, take two minutes to fix, and you will reduce your 270, 240 errors down to 30. So, um, so that's just an example. It's an extreme number, I just wanted to point out the, uh, so you can use it, you can just use your mouse, and you can go and you click on, and you'll get a little overlay, or I'm waving the next page by the look at things. How about I walk through the um, panel over here first? So we can t turn off all styling on our site. Basically, uh, this is the sanity test that I do myself. Uh, without Wave, actually, one of the first things you should do when you're testing, you turn off your CSS, you turn off your images. I am going to destroy this 10 minute mark, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can quickly toggle, see what your site looks like uh, with styles off. Gives you your structure, does it make sense? Uh, the question earlier about do you want nav at the top or the bottom, this illustrates it right here. If you are visiting the site for the first time and you want to find out what your links are available to you, you don't want to go through all the content first and then get to the navigation. So we can turn the styles back on. And now we're going to show you the other view with the contrast. And my thumb. So we have. 337 contrast errors. So there are thresholds for contrast. Uh, for small text, uh, it's 4.5 to 1, and for large text, it's 7 to 1. Uh, these standards are also applicable to mobile. Uh, mobile, because of uh, its nature, you're more screen glare, you want to stick with the higher end for the spectrum because it, situational distortion, that type of thing. Uh, so the contrast there is, if, you, if I click on one of these, right here, very low background contrast between the foreground and the background color. So I click this for more information, it gives you the instant documentation, the standard that it maps to, and this will take you off to the W3 site, W3C, uh, no, not, not W3 schools, it will take you to the W3C, the governing body for web accessibility initiatives. Okay. They, they're the people that develop the WCAG specifications. Um, so as you go through here, you can. This is again. This is back to contrast. So I'm gonna. I don't need to talk about 330 contrast errors. I think I made my point. Um, so if we go over to the information, I talked about the filter, and you can apply. WCAG A, single A, full means triple A. It means you want everything. Uh, the section 508. So if we were to change that filter, you will see if I change it to single A, it'll instantly update the number of errors I get, unless they're all double A errors. <laughs> so as you're going through this list, uh, I'm not left handed, so I should, shouldn't try my left hand. Uh, you can check off the different items and go through the list. You can scroll, but as you want to check them, you can go through your list. So some other errors we have, uh, missing alternative text, uh, your search form up here. You don't have a label for this. Uh, search is pretty much, uh, by nature, every site, majority of sites have a, have a search. Uh, they don't have a label because it's implied explicitly. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the few exceptions where you can omit the label but you want to make sure that you're using the title attribute. Now, that's not a green light to go using title attributes because that's only one of two technical cases where you should be using titles. The other being a iframe. <coughs> because if you, if you don't have a title on the iframe, a screen reader will, will encounter that and they'll hear the source then. So your HTTP, blah, 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 blah. Don't do that. Uh, I'm going to just show you the quickly so again, this is the document structure. Very important. It's the backbone. It's the structure of your site. It's what you build upon. Uh, 
It's not necessary to make sure you start on an H1 because a lot of time it won't be possible to do that, but you do want to follow the order sequentially. You want to have an H3 followed by an H4. It doesn't mean you have to start at an H1, but you want to make sure that, uh, for example, we go from an H1 to an H5. Hi, Oscar. So we don't, um, you want to have a heading of, oh, so we have H3, will you attend? 94 attendance, so it's it's okay, but it could be improved. So I just wanted to show the heading structure, <clears throat> how that's supposed to work. Um, that is pretty much everything I've covered. I've covered the documentation, the style, the tabbing. Um, is this easy to use? Think you can use it? Yeah. Think you'll use it? Yes. Yes, absolutely, that's the answer I wanted. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go back to the slideshow. I think I am. So, oh, there we go. So, the file box toolbar, you may not, you may have uh, web content that's not ready for prime time, you want to test it locally, uh, and that's where the toolbar comes in. It's uh, Firefox only at the moment, they're working on a Chrome version as well. Uh, the big difference between the web version and the toolbar is the web version will not evaluate your scripting. So it's a big distinction. Uh, this will parse, both will parse the DOM, but this will not, even, this waits for your JavaScript to finish firing and then it'll evaluate. So I'm going to go back again and quickly apply the toolbar onto the same site. There will be a little difference in the number of errors you will see. Uh, again, it's dead simple to use. Click a button, it'll run. So we have 249 errors, which is actually pretty close. Um, again, you have the same features, a lot of the same features you'll recognize. You show your, these are all your order of your items that you're in there. You have a text only version, which is different from the, uh, the toolbar. Uh, show your document outline, the same as I just showed you. Uh, reset your page, back how it was. And uh, disable your styling, same feature as when you're looking at the different views. Uh, the nice part about this, you have an easy access to the icon guide. Uh, obviously red is an error, yellow is an alert, and green are different accessibility features, be it Y area, be it alt text, be it your headings, or long description. Um, so it, these are the icons that are used on both the, the toolbar and the, uh, the site. Ironically, not accessible. Uh, and actually, <laughs> that's uh, not true. Not true. It'll jump you down to the list and it'll explain what the icon is. I saw no silver one. <laughs> so. Uh, the Wave API is new, relatively new. Last March they unveiled it. Uh, the cost is not free. It's the only service of the three that is that you have to pay for. But as you can see, based on the volume that you purchase, it ranges from four cents a credit to 0.25 a credit. Uh, you can customize it to return either XML or JSON. Uh, they do, this is not available publicly on their site, but they do have started offering a beta standalone license that you can install on a Mac. Windows or Linux machine. Uh, they just, I emailed one of the developers yesterday just to confirm that the, I had the wave for the API information correct and he said that recently they had one machine, an old Mac Mini, process 10,000, 100,000 calls. No problem at all. So it's a pretty robust API. Different tools, you can spy to your site, you can manage URLs, you can set up scan times. Uh, I suggest you, you look into it. It's an awesome tool. People at WebAIM are awesome. Uh, so that's it for Wave. Uh, some other testing tools I just want to bring to your attention. Uh, your keyboard. Go to the Meetup site, hit tab a few times, tell me where you are, because I can't. So uh, there's no focus styles on there. Uh, screen readers, as Billy talked about screen readers, you have JAWS, NDBA, which is free. Uh, and if you're a Mac guy, you just command F5, and uh, you'll, you'll get voiceover enabled. One thing about voiceover on Macs, 
is by default, it will not go through links. You'll have to go through the settings and change it. It'll just do form controls. Uh, a couple of products uh, that are developed by the company Billy works for, Passiello Group, is the Watt toolbar. It's the Web Accessibility Toolbar. This is an IE specific testing tool because real people use IE. So, <laughs> Uh, color contrast analyzer, it's a little picker tool that you can put it over your site and it'll tell you the contrast foreground and background. Uh, you can also upload pictures, you can change the style, you can test for the different type protonopia, uh, the different types of color blindness. Um, you can kill the contrast, actually it's a really good way to test your site actually. Black and white, if you can read everything you should be doing okay. Uh, FireEyes is a free, down, a free uh, Firefox plugin from DQ, which is another accessibility agency. Diagnostic CSS was uh, developed by a colleague of Billy's, Carl Rhodes. Uh, it's a CSS that you can apply to your site instantly and it'll highlight any accessibility errors you have. No Coffee plugin was developed by Aaron Leventhal, who is one of the original developers behind ARI, the ARIA specification. Uh, it's cool to play with, it simulates different de uh, vision deficiencies. Kind of like the color contrast analyzer, but you can also apply cataracts, uh, different floaters, um, tunnel vision, those type of things. Very cool. And then you have Firebug, Web Dev Toolbar. You can use all those. Anything that's in the developer's toolbox, you can use those as well to traverse the DOM and make sure your content's accessible. And lastly, we have high contrast mode, similar to what Billy was talking about with knocking out sprites. If you turn your computer into high contrast mode, it will knock away your CSS background sprites. So you want to make sure you have an alternate for those as well. Uh, some links, some useful links uh, that, I, that I would think be useful for people that are new to accessibility. WebAIM, obviously, the W3C site. ATutor is from the IRDC at OCAD. They actually have a free online web accessibility course that'll walk you through the different, different versions of WCAG. Uh, go to the site, it's on the left toolbar. It's a little old, but I mean, WCAG hasn't changed since 2008, so it's still relevant. Uh, Web Accessibility is a very good site, very robust in terms of the content it covers. WebEx is a great accessibility blog. And XSIQ is another company from Australia that does a great job of organizing content about accessibility. So, my final words of advice, you are the most important testing tool. Testing tools will only reveal 20, potentially 25 to, best mates vary, but 25 to 28% of accessibility errors on your site. It is vital for a person to verify your testing. Uh, if you are tasked with testing, you have to be pragmatic about it, you have to offer solutions. Just to say, no, that's not accessible, that's not good enough. Nobody likes to hear no, you want to offer a solution. Twitter, the accessibility community on Twitter is fantastic. Use the A11Y hashtag. A11Y is actually shorthand for accessibility because there's 11 letters between A and Y in the word. Use that, that's what that is. So use that hashtag, if you have a question, tweet it, it's awesome. And everything's changing. Five years ago there was no iPhone, Android's new. It's constantly changing. Be a sponge, just soak up what you can about accessibility. It's not hard, as Billy showed you in his 10 steps. And share what you know. So, thank you.